Before I start another series, I'd like to say the reason I'm reading these, uh, especially bringing back some of the stuff when I was a kid, I had to write it down because if I'd started to try to just ad lib it, I would wind up rambling and it would just go on for too long. But later on, when I do quite a few of these and get into the point to where it's more recent, then I probably will not be reading them and just tell the story. This is uh, Chapter 2, Part 2, The Big House and Anthers. The only time I can remember getting a real honest-to-goodness spanking was when I tried to go to Egan to get some gasoline for my tricycle. Dad always went to Egan to get gasoline. One day I was playing on my tricycle and decided I needed to go to up to Egan on my tricycle to get some gas. I made it up on the highway, across the railroad track, and well underway when I looked down into Anthers and saw my mother screaming up at me. From the way she was acting, I decided I was in some I was at some place I should not be. I turned around and coasted over the railroad just before a steam engine came by. My mother broke a switch out of a tree and really let me have what I deserved. Other than that, I don't remember getting a lot of spankings. Mother's reputation as a fighter probably protected her kids. No one wanted to do anything that would put them into a confrontation with her. I can remember only one occasion where someone harassed me. This pervert worked in the commissary. He was a squirrely acting guy and one of those individuals who exudes weirdness. When I, and I'm only five or six years old at this time. I don't know exactly how old I was, but around five. When I walked into the commissary, he would grab a weenie and say to me, Boy, I have got your weenie. I really disliked this person, and one day I was sitting on the railroad track in front of the commissary. He came out of the store holding a weenie, taunting and shaking it at me. I picked up a rock and let it fly, knocking out three or four of his teeth. He started toward me, and some of the men who witnessed it, witnessed it told him he had gotten what he deserved and to stay away from me. His face was scarred from my thrown rock, and that was the end of the harassment because he never approached me again. The commissary was the center of all personal activity in Anthers. One day I was in the commissary, and a man came in with a shotgun and approached another man and asked him, where do you want to be shot, in the head or the foot? The other man said, in the head. Then they walked out the door. The man with the shotgun pointed it in the air and fired. Then both men started laughing and talking. To this day, I don't know what this was all about unless it was friends acting out some sort of weird meeting ritual. It was a traumatic thing for a young boy to witness. The commissary had a large soft drink container filled with chunks of ice. It was a treat to go to the commissary and get a Pepsi-Cola. In those days, the bottles contained paper labels, and as the day progressed, the ice started to melt. The melted ice contained hundreds of Pepsi-Cola labels floating around in the water. And why I remember that, I don't know, but I do. Family trips by automobile didn't give us a break from mother and dad feuding and fighting. How we went through those years without having an automobile accident is a miracle. It's sad that most of my younger years were filled with so much discourse between my parents. I am sure it affected me in some negative way, but no one can claim a perfect situation. Mother and Dad always taught us to be honest, and I never saw my mother and Dad do anything dishonest. Dad would tell me stories about World War I and how guys would steal things. He told me that he never took anything from the Army that didn't belong to him, and, believe, and I believed what he told me was the truth. The only bad things about my childhood was the constant tension between mother and dad, 
and I am sorry to say this continued on through the rest of their lives. And there's Graham still barking. <laughs>